Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is taking it back, huh? Well, I want to get to the point where I'm not losing it. <laughs> that's, the best, that's the best, right? All right. Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. I want to give God praise and thanks for his privilege of having you here. And I trust you will receive something that will continue to inspire and bless you and draw you closer to the Lord. Amen. And help you receive maximum results from your covenant. Amen. We're talking about covenant now. Uh, it's, the title is Our Mediator, but he's the mediator of a better covenant. And the, the people of God must work their covenant. If you learn to operate within the covenant, you'll go w with no needs unmet. You'll not live in fear. You're not living in lack. You're not living in depression. You're not living in defeat. Because the covenant has covered you from everything. Amen? So, all right. It's bought and paid for. All you got to do is learn what's in the covenant and get in line with it and begin to flow. Say so flow. All right. Praise his name. Uh, I'm going to make this statement first. God's sovereignty controls the things that's within what he says. 
It's in God's sovereignty to control the things within what he says. That's how his sovereignty is used or exerted. It's going to be within what he says. If it's not what he says, then he's not sovereign over that. I don't, I don't understand what I'm saying so far. See, his sovereignty operates within his world. Trust it, at the end, you'll understand more what we're saying. Now, this is where we come in at. The covenant based on two parties for it to benefit and work like it's supposed to. We got a man's side and we got a God's side. In too many times, we put it on the God's side. If it's God's will, then it, then he'll do it. If it's not, he won't, as though we have nothing to do with it and what we do. That would make it unfair. And that wouldn't be a covenant. That would be dictatorship. <laughs> but it's covenant. And how the covenant works is whatever you don't have, God is your covenant partner through Jesus. He makes it up. Amen. Quit looking at you and what you have and don't have Amen. when it comes to the covenant. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what it, whatever you have, because you don't have enough. I tell you right now, amen, thank you. Now, when we operate within God's covenant ourselves, then we control what comes to pass in our lives. I know that's awesome when you say something like, oh, no, you ain't God. No, I didn't say I was God. I'm saying I'm like God. We created in God's class. And when you understand that, then you'll see that it's not something unimaginable to believe that. Okay, to turn now to Matthew chapter 21, we're going to read a story here, that he... Actually, this is an object lesson that Jesus used, but he's trying to teach his disciples. It's not for him. It's for us. Matthew 21, verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered, meaning Jesus, and when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves on it and said unto it, now, here is Jesus talking to a tree, a fig tree. Now, right there, we lose it with people. I saw somebody talking to a tree. Ah, oh, got to be something wrong with him. Not necessarily. He's talking to the fig tree. Okay. Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth. Can you imagine? I can understand that why it's being cursed. He is the maker of you, and you ain't got nothing for the make creator who created you. You ain't got nothing to give him. Well, you know, he don't need you then. Uh, so, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Henceforth means from that point on, when? When he said to it, let no fruit grow on thee. So, whatever it looked like after that had no bearing on the tree, the fruit tree giant. I said Matthew chapter 21. Did I say Matthew 21? Maybe I didn't say that. Okay, thank you. Then, then they got to catch up with us. Okay. Uh, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Verse 20. When the disciples saw it, they marveled. Now, it wasn't for to marvel them. <laughs> Had they not been disconnected through Adam, they would have known exactly what to do. What they're doing marveling, they his disciples. And they must have missed that class. Disciple means a learner, a student. A pupil. You can be in class and still not learn nothing. See, can no one make you learn? So you're in class now. I, I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to inform you based on the word of God so you can begin to take advantage of what belongs to you. It's yours already. But someone needs to instruct you how to get it, right? Even in the will and the natural, when someone loses it, leave it to you, you got to have it probated. Let's say it's with an attorney. Well, you don't know all the language of attorney, right? So if you don't go and get it probated to an attorney, you may not get all you're supposed to get. So that's the purpose of that. So Jesus is our immediate. He is there to make sure we get everything belong to us that he died for. Amen. Praise God. He's there to ensure that. Okay. Watch what it says, verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if ye have faith, and doubt not, underline, and doubt not. Ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig. So it's telling me that faith not only affects trees. Hallelujah. You ain't, you ain't hear what I'm saying. But he's saying this faith will affect everything. 
that you're involved in. Your family, your health, your business, your wife, marriage, everything. To, to everything. All right. Not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall and it shall be done. It shall is it maybe or might be. It, it shall or definitely show enough, right? When you say shall, that means it's show enough. It must. It's, that's must, right? Imperative, right? So it shall be done. Verse twenty-two. And all things. How many? How many things? Are all. All things. Whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. Stop right there. If we put a period there, then what would that seem to indicate? And uh, all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer. It would seem like prayer wouldn't have no conditions on it. Hello. Sometimes we're praying, but we ain't praying in faith. <laughs> See, we we praying, but we ain't, we, we, we ain't praying in accordance with the covenant. See, to pray, you can't just go pray. Say, oh, God, just give me something, do something. That ain't the covenant. You got to talk, find out what the covenant's saying. Now, and say, believing, believing, say, believing, ye shall receive. So when you pray, you believe then. So you don't believe when you see it. You don't believe when you feel it. You believe it when? When you pray, when you ask, all right? So when you ask God in prayer, so that means you got to know how to pray. This stuff we call praying is nothing but begging. <laughs> Not even that. It's worse than begging. It's hobo. And you're just like, God, oh, give it to me, God. Now, let's go over to 17 chapter. See, when someone gives you something, leave it to you in the will, you ain't got to beg for it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All you got to do is go ask for what you're supposed to get and give me my stuff. Amen. Quit arguing with it. Quit not get to give me my stuff. It belonged to you. So let's look at Matthew chapter 17. While we're over there, we're going to go something. Glory be to God. You know, Matthew chapter 17, and I want to look at verse 16. Begin there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Well, the story is that the man brought his son who had been uh, convulsed and controlled by the spirit that threw him in the fire and tried to kill him. Amen. It convulsed him. Okay. Let's look and read verse 16. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples. To Jesus, now they want to know why couldn't we do it? Amen. That's a good question, right? Did they have the authority to do it? Yeah. According to Matthew 10 1, they did. He gave them the authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. Okay. But you can have the authority, you can have the power, but do you have faith in the power yeah. and in the authority? Amen. Praise God. That's what's going to cause the work for you. Now, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast them out? And Jesus said unto them, Because you're not tall enough. Uh, you're not sh okay. <laughs> because, because what church you go to? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. What, because of the size of your Bible. Because you roll down the aisle. Oh, okay. Because of your what? Unbelief. Who's unbelief? Yeah. Who's unbelief? You unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. Remove hence to yonder, and it just might. It shall remove. It shall remove. Say, it shall remove. Now here's what I'm getting to. We're leading tonight. I mean, it's so many times we say, if the Lord do it, it's okay. It's up to the Lord to do this. If God moves or not. No, he's saying you. It's your, you, you got your, so we've been putting everything on God. No, it's in your hand now. It's a covenant now. It's on your side. Leave God alone. 
and say, you know what, I'm going to find out, I'm going to believe God, do what he said, and have what he said. Amen. And, uh oh this is really going to be something you're going to, the last part of this verse. And nothing, said nothing, shall be impossible unto God, unto Jesus. Unto who? Well, point at you, you know where you is, right? Don't, not me, you, amen. Nothing shall be impossible unto you, that's me, amen. So now I understand, if I line up with this, then when I begin to believe God for anything in the covenant, it won't be denied me because it won't be impossible for God to do it. So nothing, say nothing. So whatever you are in right now, whatever you're going through right now, it is not impossible for you to overcome it. Oh, man. And it's good news. I mean, I don't care what your situation is. It's a mountain. It's a mountain. Quit staring at the mountain and acting like the mountain is this big deal. You're the big deal. See, watch this. See, the mountain can't grow no more. No, oh, man, let me shut. Don't shut me down. The mountain can't grow anymore, but you can. Oh, if you keep on believing, keep on standing, keep on confessing, your faith will cause you to grow to a place where the mountain must move. Because oh. God's power in you continue to grow and grow until you put enough pressure on the mountain that it's got to leave. Amen. All right. Thank you. I mean, just don't, just when you, when you, when you say mountain move, quit going out to see if the mountain left or not. That's your problem. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You don't do that. So the mountain says it's gone. Says it's gone. Now the mountain may be a knot on your leg. Hello, somebody. And it, you prayed for it last month and the, the knot got bigger. <laughs> Hello. Talk to me. <laughs> now, if you apply this principle, are you supposed to look at the knot or what he said? What we usually look at? <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's go over to now. Here's where you're gonna. This is how you're gonna get to your faith. When you, when God gives you faith, faith is is small. It's a measure, so it's not gonna be sufficient enough to do all that God said it can do. But don't get discouraged because faith comes out here. You're not gonna come in the thing to God and just be a big mountain moving person. First of all, get you a mold hill. Start out with it. Start, out, start believe God for a headache to be gone. And for you don't take excedrin. If you can't believe God for a headache, there ain't no point you talking about cancer. Come on, talk to me. Ain't no point you talking about high blood pressure when you can't even believe him for that. Now, hello, somebody. So get you something small. Say small. Here's, how about this? If you keep your mouth for a whole week, that's a challenge right there, right? Is keep your tongue, don't go off for a whole week. Use your faith for that, amen? Do something like that. That's going to cost you nothing, right? I mean, mon monetarily. I mean, it's going to cost you something because you're going to be squirming when folks talk to you crazy and you ain't used to let, taking that stuff. Now turn over this, this, this scripture over here, Joshua. So we're going to Joshua now. Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to pick up at verse 5. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But well, this is this say the covenant. I mediated. Amen. God's sovereignty in controlling whether or not his will is done on the earth in terms of local, in a local sense or personal sense. That's what I'm saying. Praise God. Is governed by his covenant people responding. To the parameters of divine and spiritual law. Let me say that again. Let me get praise his name. So God's sovereignty and controlling whether or not his will is done on earth in a local or personal sense is governed by his covenant people responding to, appropriately, to spiritual divine law. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The parameters of the divine law. So divine law have parameters. And when the covenant people respond in line with those laws, divine law, then they receive what the covenant says. So it's not like, I want, this one, it's not like God decided you to give it to you. 
after you ask him. It ain't like God decided to do something for you once you No, it's already done. Amen. Praise. So when it's covenant people, you say, I'm in covenant with God. So now what I got to do is find out what the covenant says. Then we're going to get how do I get for me with the covenant? How do I make the covenant mine in a personal way? You're going to meditate. Say meditate. When last you meditated on something? On the word, praise God. So you, you can meditate on defeat. You can meditate on being down and become more down. So uh, let's read here. Amen. So it's divine spiritual law, the parameters. All right. Meditate. This definition of meditate. The Bible says, I'm quoting here now, John chapter 15, verse 7, is what it says. If you abide in me, this is Jesus speaking, and we abide in him, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Said, ask what you will, and he shall be done unto you. See, if you abide in me, meaning him, and his words abide in you, you can ask what you will. Say you will. Yeah. See, most of the time I'm saying, well, you, you got, it's got to be God's will for it to be done. It, that, it, it is true. It has to be in his will. But his will is already established. See, we don't all desire the same thing. Oh, you didn't hear what I'm saying. I'm gonna, we're going to read some. There's too many folks want to control what you get. Come on, come on. You ain't hearing what. Because you broke, I'm not going to be broke because you broke. I've been broke before, and I like, I like not being broke better. But I, now, but I was broke for a long time until I got in line with the covenant. And I, I haven't seen a broke day since. That's been 40, 45 years since I've been saved. Since 45 years. It ain't been 45 years the whole time, but I'm saying when I got to a place in the covenant from the last, the last 40 years, the last 40 years, ah, the covenant's been working. Amen. Praise God. All right. Hold on to that. Amen. Say divine law. Now, let me give you the definition of law that I'll be using, okay? The law is a system, a principle, a rule that is fixed to give us or give a person or give a thing a certain repetitive predetermined outcome. The law. Say law. law. Rule, principle. To give a principle, predetermined, fixed outcome over and over. Case in point. One plus one is two. That's a law. When is it three? Never. Never. Okay. So that, that's the law. So one, now, when it, is it two, one plus one, two, when you're dealing with money? I'm asking a question. Is one plus one true when you're dealing with apples? So it doesn't matter what you're dealing with, one plus one is what? That is a principle. Okay, now, gravity is a principle. And what's, what's, what, what, what I want to get to, you don't have to pray for a principle of work. Oh, you ain't hear my <laughs> Ain't nobody hear what I'm saying? Get off your knees sometime and get into principle. It's a place for prayer, but the thing we're praying for is already yours. You don't need to pray for it. You need to get in principle so you receive what belongs to you. Oh, y'all hear me? See, we're praying for things that belong to you already. That you need to get into the principle. Oh man. Thank you, Lord. So, no, now, here's the, so it is not God's will. Say so it's God's will for you to prosper. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. And let me give you meditate. The Hebrew words melateo. M-E-L-E-T-A-O. I'm going to give you the basic definition. You can give a, a myriad of things, but I just want to keep it simple. And it simply means to recite in a low undertone. Just recite something in a low undertone or low utterance. Thank you. You're saying it. No, don't go around saying where everybody can hear you. 
You ain't meditating now. You're showing off. <laughs> because everybody don't want to hear what you're talking about. Now, what is, now, so that's what meditate means. And, and meditation is, is what you're doing, you're saying. And I'm going to give you the principle for that. And every time you meditate, you're gonna, it's like the cow chewing the cud. You reach on so every time I read the word, there's more revelation comes. The same scripture. Amen. Say meditate. So meditating is really this. I'm a simple, is automatizing the covenant. Say that. Automatizing the covenant. So when I'm meditating, I'm verbalizing the covenant. I'm not talking just to be talking. I'm verbal. Now it's a reason for verbal because when I when I verbalize it, I'm speaking it. I'm putting it out there where God, who is the covenant partner, can bring it to pass in my life. Oh man, very good thing. Hallelujah! Thank. I'm not automatizing it to show off. See, God has designed a system. And he's only going to operate in the system. So his sovereignty is going to only control those things that work, operate, and share within his, his system. Amen. All right. Those things he'll confirm. All right. Number one, praise God, the covenant law is not to depart out of your mouth. The covenant law is not to depart out of your mouth. Always talk to covenant, no matter what. How many of y'all hear what I'm saying? Number two, these are things that will help you in developing a meditation principle and meditation in terms of you becoming a meditator. Add these ingredients in there to become a meditator. Amen. Do not let the law of God depart out of your mouth. Number two, the law of meditation the law of meditation must dominate your thinking. Must dominate your thinking. And number three, the law of meditation must span your entire life until you program to a place where prosperity is produced all the time. In other words, it's God's will for you to prosper in everything. I'm going to quote this in Psalms 1 and 1. Most of y'all know it. Quote it along with this fan. It said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate, he or she, day and night. It's a day and night. Day and night. That's the same thing you're saying now to let it depart from your mouth. Day and night. When you say, Pastor, I got to go to work. <laughs> you can go to work and meditate. You go to work and do some other, other things you weren't supposed to do. Day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the water. He shall be like a tree planted by the water. That bringing forth his fruit in this season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. So the only person going to prosper is the one that meditated, right? Now, just because you're a Christian, just because you have a covenant, just because you're born God, just because you're saved, it's not going to work just because you're saved. Say, so work the covenant. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. But you got to know what the covenant is. Now, what happened? This is what happened with meditation. You meditate until. Nothing comes back to you and out of you but what the word says, the covenant. Amen. If you're sick, you won't say if you're sick, you'll talk, you'll talk the covenant. Amen. Praise. If you're facing something that could be featured, I'm going to give you an illustration of that. Now, David was a person who learned what it means to be in covenant with God early on. How you know? Because he was defeating lions and bears as a teenager. How many have you whipped? How many lions and bears have you defeated as a teenager? Which means he learned through meditation, how to use his covenant. Amen. But he didn't go out there looking for to go live first. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
He, he first learned how to obey his father to take care of his sheep. Amen. Hallelujah. And in that, God began to deal with him about covenant. See, if he can keep his daddy's sheep, you ain't hear what I'm saying, that wasn't his, right. and protect them, then he could, he could trust him with something that greater. Uh, see, God promotes you as you be faithful to a few things. And it, it, we understand that he got into the covenant because when it came to the Philistines, the giant, that's what David said, he said this uncircumcised Philistine means he didn't have a covenant with God. Yeah, I'm coming in the name of my God that I'm in covenant with. You ain't hear what I'm saying. And he's talking, he's speaking this before he gets to him. He's speaking those words before the giant fall. He's not going to wait till the giant fall and say it. It is saying it that set the, the giant up for the fall. It's your saying it that caused the giant to fall. But he's saying, I'm coming in the name of my God. And the Bible says he took that string shot and shrunk it. And the Holy Ghost directed it. He had five smooth stones, but he only needed he only needed one, but he had four brothers. You didn't hear what I'm saying. He had the, the, the giant had four brothers. David knew that. He killed the big one, Goliath. He said, D for the other four if I see them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, sometimes there's gonna be some other demons gonna come after you when you get them other demons. Amen. This will be some other haters when you get rid of the other haters. But God got some of them too. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, and so that's and so he, this giant, but he's meditating. That's how he did it. He didn't look at the giant. Oh, that big giant. Meditation, meditation. Oh, I'm Holy Ghost. Meditation caused God for your view of God to grow. Oh, man. It causes the God in you to expand in terms of you seeing him. Oh, See, it's, how, it's not how big God, how big God is to you. Mm -mm. Oh, man. And as you meditate, God becomes bigger inside of you. You see him, you see him doing greater. You get to a place where meditation on the word until the word becomes you. And you become the word. And you won't say nothing but what the words say. Then you're there. That's what meditation is. It's not a side job. It's becoming one with the word. So let's read this letter here. Amen. Oh, y'all yeah, listen to what I'm saying. Amen. I believe you all. Thank you. So we, it, it worked by divine law. Thank you, Lord. This tells me what we're about to read in, in, in verse 8, that God's will is pre-programmed or presupposed in the covenant. And it's not God who is arbitrarily deciding who's possible and who don't. Did you hear that? It's not God saying, okay, I'm going to call you to prosper, uh, you to prosper, but not you. Don't work that way. But that's how people have, no. It's God's will for all of his people to prosper. But all of his people are not prospering because they're not doing what he's saying. We don't want to admit that part. <laughs> so... See, you, it's not good. You can have to, you can have to at least work the covenant. The Bible says, above, he wished above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as our soul prosper. So it's God's will for us to prosper. So let's read on. So it's already pre programmed for that to happen. Let's read here, verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. That's a long time, right? As I have. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong. Say, be strong. Be strong, be strong where? Oh, okay. Be, okay. All right. Let's go on down to verse 8. Here it is. This, what? Book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Whose mouth? Your mouth. Okay. okay. Well, you ain't got time to be cursing for God. <laughs> I'm, 
You, you ain't got time to, to, to talk about it. Or, uh, I, I ain't no good. You, you ain't got no time to be talking about, I ain't got this and I ain't got that. You ain't, you ain't got time to say that, man. You ain't got time to talk about all your problems, man. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm not going to. Is that the part that's why I can't make it? Oh, I don't know how long it may last. Where is that in, in, the, in the book? So, 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 don't, never, don't let it depart. Now, I realize when you begin to do this thing, somebody's going to call you old spiritual person. You just want to call the Bible all. Yes! If I'm being blessed, yeah, I'm going to talk a lot of time. I ain't talking to you. Talking your mess ain't giving me nothing but trouble. <laughs> Why should I listen to you? You defeated. You poor. You can't help it. Amen. Praise God. Why should I talk to nothing with you? <laughs> How did everything get? I'm just so sick. See, reading you're sad because you say you're sad. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Now, oh, man, oh, let me get off, oh, get off of that. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do it. You will meditate till you do it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. According to all that is written therein for then, said for then. We want, we want, we want to prosper for, for then. If you don't do this up here, verse eight, a part of verse eight, then look, don't look. For then, God shall make thy way prosperous. Hallelujah, Lord! It is a God. It is a God. Oh, what do you, what do you say then? You, for then thou, thou you, for you, for then you shall make thy way prosperous, and then. Thou or you shall have good success. Amen. You will. Amen. So if you don't have good success, whose fault? Amen. Oh. He said good success. Good success is success where God gets the glory. Good success is success given to you based on the covenant. Good success is success that don't leave you high and dry. When it's over. Good success is Bad success when you get it and don't get it from God. And you look, wake up one day and it's gone. Good success when you have it all the time. When it, this, is, this is assured. Now, this, now, can we succeed and have success while the coronavirus is going on? Can we? So if we talk to cousin during coronavirus, what are we going to have? Success. Protection. Thank you, Lord. So, so, the, the, so the, 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 the success that you have is not predicated on what circumstances. So, if you say the covenant, then the covenant is going to work no matter what's going on. But how many are glad about having a covenant like that? Thank you. Now, let's look at something. Hebrews 8 and 6 real quick. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But this covenant must get into you, in your spirit, in your mind, so that the covenant is something that you are automatizing. Because every time you say the covenant, you hear it. How many, ever, how many of you ever talk yourself into something? Come on, talk to me. It's not, neg it's not a negative. I mean, you ought to talk good. When you want you to get the job, I know they're going to hire me. That's when I went to the job. When I got saved, I went in. I said, they're going to hire me. Ain't no doubt about it because I'm the best person for the job. If they don't hire me, that's their fault. They're going to miss out. That's how I went in for the job. Not going, to, oh, I hope I'm going to get this job. No, I went in there believing it's mine. Amen. Look at this way. See, you are, it ain't nothing like you. are unique. See, you're unique. And say, so I'm designed to win. I'm, I'm made to win. See, so I can't lose. See, even when you look like you're losing, you're winning. Oh, you didn't, you didn't get that, right? See, Jesus, it looked like he was winning, losing, rather, when they killed him and put him in the grave. He was winning. Hallelujah. He was winning because he was obeying the Father. So when folks think you're losing, you're winning. And the next time they see you, you're bless even more. From the, how they think, how they think, because they can't keep you. They can't keep it down. Can't keep a good woman down or a good man down. Man, as a matter of fact, you can't even put him down. You ain't got to keep him down. <laughs> Amen. That's better than that, right? Look at that, Hebrews 8 and 6. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by heaven, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Let's go down to verse 10 and 11 and 12. Are you all there? For this is the covenant 
a will that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws where? Principles, rules, in their what? Their minds, and write them on their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be my people. So once these laws are transferred in their, their heart into their mind, and write them, and I will be them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. You, did you get that? He said, once, you, once you write God's laws in your heart with meditation, then nobody got to tell you that God is real or not. Amen. You didn't get that. Nobody got to tell you you don't know God. Because right. he revealed in his word. And because when you become one with what, you become one with him. Amen. And then he show you who he is. Yeah. And then he show you his power. He shows you his, and then you become his representative down here. You become, you become him on him. You can be able to do what he do. Mm. When I want it, you in a class with God. When you can talk like God talk and get what He get, you got some. Amen. Hundred thing. That means just say the word and let let folks just look at you marvelous. Ooh, they got another car. They bless another again. They Simon. They mean they not they not down and out anymore. No, ain't no point in getting depressed every time I see you. But they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for I, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. From the least to the greatest, verse 13. In that he said, a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decayed and waxed old is ready to vanish away. Now let's, let's go to uh, Psalm 119. Amen. Psalm 119. Praise God. There are some synonyms for law. And I give you those. There are some synonyms for law. Thank you, Lord. Well, Psalms 119. And uh, thank you, Lord. One. Hallelujah. Now there, Psalm 119 and verse 1, it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. You see that? Say, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Raw, principle, rule. Why is he blessed? Because he gets everything that he, the covenant says, because he obeys the covenant. See, God is not honoring you, he's honoring the covenant. And when you honor the covenant by doing it, then he honor you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. There's something. See, he, he's looking for someone to say, you know what, I'm not ashamed to say what God said about something. Amen. Praise God. Because Look here, look at it this way. You ain't got to know where you're already sick, so you're gonna die anyhow, or you're gonna you defeated, you put you go they're gonna put the they're gonna put you out next week anyway in the rinse. I don't mean you personally. So you may well say well, you want you to take a chance to stand with the covenant say you're going out there with anyway, they're gonna put the door stuff out if you don't say something. If you don't say nothing, they're gonna put it out. At least if you start saying it, they you, they may it may work. I mean it will, but I'm just simply saying if you got a choice, whatever you're going through, you ain't got nothing to lose, some of us, amen. So I'm gonna go with God, right? Start saying what you say. You've been depressed all week. Won't you say what you got? I will know I will not be depressed if we say it. Say said. Well, I've been depressed, all my, all my cousins depressed with all of them, all of them on medication, everyone I knew. Well, you quit saying that. That's why you got, man, well, I don't know. I, I, I just I just feel like a dog. You do? <laughs> no wonder. You got any fleas? <laughs> I mean, you looking for fleas next. Is you, is you sick of the dog? You looking for fleas next? <laughs> okay. It's, it, law is synonymous with testimonies, precepts, judgment, commands, statutes, paths, ways, sayings, words. I, 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 I want that again. When you say law, don't just think about law in the sense of Ten Commandments. Law in the sense of this is what. You know, when you meditate, God gonna show you a path. Ooh, He gonna show you a way. He gonna say something to you. Oh, you didn't hear what I was saying. Mm -hmm. He gonna give you a precept. He gonna make it. He gonna let you make a decision that's gonna help you. Oh man! And then he, he gonna testify to you that he with you by confirming your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, so when you get in line with the covenant, you won't fail because when God said it won't return void. Yeah. 
So when you said it won't return void, if you believe it. Amen. Now let's go over here. Well, see, now if I understand this, I'm gonna be fine. That how God created me. Amen. He didn't create you to talk all that negative stuff you've been talking. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> no, no, I ain't been. I ain't never nothing. My family ain't nothing. I ain't. Nothing. I'm a nobody. I just, I just, I just nothing go good for me. Every time I touch something, it goes down to a hill. Amen. Nobody wants me because I just know I just I'm just ugly. I'm just this. Just shut up a moment. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Look over here. Thank you. Now, now, when then when folks say what you say about, then you get mad. If I hear if I hear you talk about you, I'm gonna get right in on it. You show sure like that. You show sure is. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but the devil will. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You ever tell folks you business they, they, instead of them encouraging you? They look at you like. Yeah, you finally got your comments up. <laughs> yeah, you finally got you. And you going around talking about the word, telling the popular, you the head, not the tail. Look at you now. <laughs> Amen. Anybody ever face that? <laughs> Look at you now. So keep your mouth. Watch who you talk around. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So get in the See, I, I first I got in the closet and talked to myself. I told her, you more than a conqueror. I am. I had a few questions answered by you all. Because you don't look like it, but I kept saying, I'm a more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm meditating. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more. And after a while, I got kind of bold. I started saying, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror, I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I said that, I began to believe it. And I began to believe it. It began to happen. And it began to happen. I began to say it more and more and more. Now, all I talk about is the covenant. Now, thank you, Lord. Now, when you talk to company, it's the folk going to be, again, they want you to talk to the circus, they talk, talk to the problem, what you ain't got. Because they want you to be dying out with them. Man, let's read this. Turn over there to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to Jesus, as part of our God's redemptive plan, Jesus, as part of God's redemptive plan, mediated terms of the new covenant that regained, reclaimed, and restored our dominion in the earth in Jesus' name. Say, say restored dominion. Through Jesus, he had restored in his name dominion in the earth. Say dominion. Oh, man, this, this really blessed me. Thank you, Lord. Now, the blessing was the blessing of when he blessed them, the blessing in large part was the dominion he gave them. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll tell you, I'll define dominion momentarily. Amen. I said the blessing, which means to speak well of, was the dominion he gave them. And we're going to find out how he gave them dominion. They were supposed to use and exercise dominion the same way he did. And words are the primary things for dominating. If you can get your tongue under, let me tell you, if you can get your tongue under, you can win. Can I get it? Amen? If you can get your tongue to stay with God, you'll never be down on nothing. But it's a, it ain't the easy thing. You could be talking about the word and someone come along and get on something negative and before you know you done commented in there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this coronavirus show is, oh. And all of a sudden you're talking the same thing they're talking. And now you're scared to go home. Now you're scared of everything. Yeah, is coronavirus coming to get me next? No, 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 no. Did God know coronavirus was coming on the scene? Well, what is God scared? Is God what? What is He doing? Man, uh, let me leave that alone. Him. So the blessing. Let me see what the blessing is. Can I say that now? The blessing is the empowerment to operate in the image and likeness of God. Of those based on those in the Godhead, the Father, Son. That's that is the blessing. The empowerment to operate us, as human, with dominion in the image and likeness of God. That is the blessing. 
that he wants you to focus on. The blessing was not the thing. The car, the house. Oh, oh man. The car, the house, the clothes, that's not the blessing. That's the result of the blessing. The blessing is you that can produce the car, the house. And the now you can have the kind of house you want. Because the house is going to come out of you. Like you came out of him. Oh, my God. You talk the house and what you want, talk it in the bean. Come on, you got, mm-hmm. You can talk. To, oh, maybe this, this, he gave, you're going to just hold, I'm going to get it all tonight, but we're going to say. So he, our mediator has reclaimed for us your position of dominion. Elohim is plural. Let's read here. Amen. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion, unlined dominion, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now stop the press. Amen. Thank you, Lord. A fish, a bird, say bird. A bird is limited if you lock him in a cage. Let's take an eagle. Let's take a hawk. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He, 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 he or she can't show and demonstrate what a bird can really do in that say inside of the cage. Oh man, let's take the eagle. But if you take him and put him in the air, oh my God, put the eagle in the air. That's his element. Amen. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. What he couldn't do in the cage. Mm. I said, what he couldn't do in the cage, he can now demonstrate because it's in his DNA. Well, the same thing in you. When you like God already. When you get in your element inside the covenant, in line with him, then you could you get into a place where you can be in do like he do. Say what he said, have what he said. Have. Oh, man. Because you made it his image. Oh, man. That, that good news. So the minion is the Hebrew word pronounced ood. O W D. The root means to repeat, duplicate, testify. I get the, the now I, I give the, I give it to me now scratch that I'm sorry, scratch that for dominion. Get, get, I said dominion right? Did I give y'all dominion yet? Okay, good. Okay, that because that wasn't dominion. Okay, I got it right then, right order. Amen. So, uh, so dominion is the ood. That's what dominion. I think. All right. And it means, no, it's not, no, no, it's not. I get, it, it's, it's the Greek word, kuri, euo, that's dominion. I'm, I'm sorry, that was me. K-U-R-I-E-U-O, kuri, euo, that's dominion. The other one is for another word, okay. And I'll give you that later, so I'm, so, I'm sorry. But, so dominion is kuri, euo. K U R I E U O. Kuri E U O. Or E U O. Okay, the root means to exercise rule over, to be lord of, or to exercise lordship. So dominion is to rule over, to lord over, to exercise. Lordship, that's what he created us to do, man, for you to have dominion. Say dominion. Okay, so your element, now even, even here, he's establishing the covenant with them. Now, when it came to the birds, he spoke to the air. When he came to the fish, he spoke to the sea. When he spoke to about you and I, he spoke to himself. Oh, he said, I'm not going to get you from the water. I'm not going to get you from the, from the air. I'm going to get you from myself. And, and you're going to have character traits just like me. 
And when you do something, it won't be a strain. See, walking in love shouldn't be a strain to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Being patient shouldn't be a strain on you. I'm a strain. What you straining for? You, you've been made in his image. So, so being patient and being kind and long-suffering, you shouldn't be straining to do that. Because in God's class, amen. Say love. love. Going around talking about, I got to pray to love. You need to fast for your love. No, you, you, you're, not, you're in God's class. And God is love. Say, say, loving, say loving is easy. It, it, what's hard is you want to do it. Because <laughs> sometimes loving means you're going to act like you're weak. Look, it, love is strong. Love is saying, I can, I can help you because you can't hurt me. <clears throat> so if I feed you, you ain't hurting me. I can get more food. You, you run up before I do. So I'm going to keep on taking care of you because I'm going to be blessed like that. Till you get it. Till you find that you can't hurt me. Yeah, I'm going to feed you next week too. Next month too until the Lord leave me otherwise because you ain't hurt me. You talking behind my back until you, how you couldn't get it with it. They're going to do that to you. But I'm so blessed because I'm going to love you anyway. Yeah. Amen. You don't know how much I got blessed for feeding you that, that donut I gave you. <laughs> how much I got gagged. <laughs> if, I tell you, if I told you that you wouldn't eat, take the donut, then you would have to. <laughs> I got blessed with two baskets full of food for the donut I gave you. Amen. So I'm telling you, come back for more. <laughs> See, when you, let, when you feed your enemy, amen. Oh, it's setting you up. They think they're taking from you, they're setting you up. Oh, because your source is God, their source is not God. And they're going to always need you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Then they'll come one day. Hallelujah. And you, I won't say that right now. Do me. So, Kevin, creep it on the earth. Now, I want to put this in. So, Elohim is plural. Oh, my God, my God. Thank you, Lord. Look at, uh, did I get verse 28? It did read 28 right so. so, the fish, so the fish on the bank, if you get a fish, anybody got, ever got a fish on the bank? And uh, that you, you wrestle with to get him on the bank. But once you got her or that sucker on the bank, what? Did you have dominion over him? You, <laughs> hello, somebody. Cause all you got to do is let him flop a while and don't let him get in the water, water long enough. Sooner or later, sooner or later, sooner or later they're going to slow down. Because they're not in the element. Amen. Put the fish in the water. You ain't got to you ain't got to send him to school because it's a law. It's a law. So he's operating by law. Put him in the water. That's what he does. You ain't got to teach him that. He does that. He swims. Amen. Take, put you in the water without a scuba. <laughs> you ain't designed for that. You're going to die. Amen. Don't, why would you want to be a fish anyway? <laughs> why you want to be a salmon? If I would be a fish, I'd be a shark. <laughs> I said, if I'm going to be a fish, I'd be a shark. <laughs> now, even, even, even a, a, a 5,000, I don't know, a 220,000 pound shark, if I get him on the bank, hold it down, if I can get that sucker on the ground, I don't care how big he is. I can handle him then. <laughs> so here's the point. When they get, the devil gets you out the word, he can handle you. When he gets you, when you're not talking to covenant, he can handle you. That's how he handles because you got off the covenant. You start, start talking the word. And now he can handle you. And now you're mad. Actually, now you want to go off on folks. You didn't let them get you out the water of the word. Sustain your element. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of y'all have so much peace when you're in the word? When you don't read the word for a while, how do you get you You get all dry and don't want to talk to folk. Hard to deal with because you, you ain't been in the word this week. And now you don't want to see a pot. I don't want to see pasta, Lynch. <laughs> Amen. But last week when you were talking to words, you were fine. When the last time you prayed, well, 
Now you're dry when I throw How you doing? Eh? <laughs> I ain't done nothing to you. He talked about victory, victory is mine, victory. <laughs> he must have known what I'm going to. I ain't no victory in mine. For him, maybe, but not for me. Telling me to be to be strong in the Lord. <laughs> to be happy. Say, be happy. Say, joy, the Lord is my strength. And quit going around depressed folk all the time. Listen to them. Amen. They, they, they come around. You, you're doing good till they came around. Well, you know, you heard it. You know, you know, nine more folks died, huh? <laughs> no, I didn't know. <laughs> Apostle, I heard you coughing. <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, okay, get back up here. Says to the covenant. So here in his image, let's read on verse 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 28. And God blessed them. Say God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the power of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. But look what he said, and God blessed him, and God said unto them, Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say, be fruitful. Now, praise it. Let's turn over here to James. We'll finish James chapter 3. We're going to finish over on that. We're going to go home. James chapter 3, verse uh, 2. Then we're going to the 10th verse. Amen. Hallelujah, y'all. James 3, verse 2. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For the many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, mature, and able also to bridle his whole body. Wow. Man. Behold, we put bits in a horse's mouth. <laughs> Amen. That they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So he's saying, listen, he's using this. You use a bit, put it in a horse's mouth. If the horse don't want to go left, what you do? You pull on that rein and yank on him. You ain't leading this thing, I am. So it's saying, if you can get your tongue, well, you're not offending with it. Saying everything that comes to your mind with it. And start talking to it. And this is our biggest problem, is that tongue. Can, can, have y'all with us, man? As soon as the pain hit, oh, here it come again. <laughs> Look at the good on verse but the, ooh, we, ooh, look at here, look at here. Verse uh, 8. Break it 5. Break, break it 5. Break it verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. Verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, and that it defiles the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature, and it's set on fire of hell. He's saying this, uh, if the tongue is like a match that can set a whole forest on fire. Just a match, one match. He's saying your tongue can set your whole life and destroy it put, yeah. with all, and kill your whole life, with, destroy it with, with your mouth. Yeah. Your mouth you destroyed your marriage. You, you, you did. Yeah. You went to him. You did. Quit looking at me. Come on. Now everybody got your ministry. You mad, man. Everybody. Well, how you talking about me? You told me. <laughs> now, well, no, I'm, let me say this. Next. We're going to get back on this here. We're going to pick up next Wednesday. This is where they got in trouble. We're going to read it next week. The devil got hold to their tongue. Yeah. Adam and Eve, both of them, he got a hold to their tongue. Yeah. And that's how he got in. He said nothing about it. He ain't got to say a thing about it unless you touch it. Yeah. And the same thing now, your tongue. Go back and see I meant the words you said last week, things you shouldn't have said, and match it to yourself and wonder how you got depressed. Thank you. Thank you. All that thing, or got mad at folks that you weren't mad at, folks, somebody told you about what the person did to you, then you got mad. Before that, you fed them. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes we, we don't be, we don't have nothing against folks or other folks who are talking about them. 
You ain't gonna change. Don't change. Don't shut me down. I wouldn't even think about it until you start talking about it. <laughs> All right, praise. We're, let's, we're gonna give give me an invitation. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can hear my voice, if you confess with your tongue, with your mouth, if you say these words, I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord. Come into my heart, Jesus. I confess you as my Lord. I want to walk in dominion. I want to be saved. I believe the Father raised you from the dead. I was not there physically, but I believe it. And I confess you as my Lord today. And I receive you, and now I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm in the family of God. I now have a covenant place with you. I'm going to learn about my covenant in Jesus' name. My covenant promised me health, wealth, peace, prosperity, blessing. I'm already blessed in Jesus' name. Now, as I begin to function in my covenant, things begin to come on me, come in me, come through me. Because if God before me, since God before me, nothing, nothing can defeat me. Because I am more than a conqueror. Because I have dominion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I don't get mad at you no more. That's why I don't get mad at folks anymore. Because I'm in the rarefied air of the Spirit of God. I'm, I'm not coming down anymore. Where they at? If they want to deal with me, they got to come up where I am. To the word. No more going down there with them. Where San Bad it is. <laughs> quit, quit going down with San Bad Get up to with folks who are talking the word. Get them around folks who talk faith, who talk covenant, covenant people. Say covenant people. Covenant people. This is how it's supposed to work. I, mean, I, I know this make wrong. This is how it's supposed to Say, I'm gonna say something covenant. You say something covenant back to me. God is more. God has said in the word, we're more than kind. I want now. Give me a covenant. I want you to talk covenant to me. Say something back to me. Give me a word back. Oh. Then I say, I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. Yeah. Or I say something else. We go from one thing to another. The, the covenant says, I'm with his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah. You're covering another covenant. You say, you know what? I, yes. And so the covenant, and it catch on. Yeah. Now everybody in the house is talking covenant. Yeah. And before we get through, ain't no God, nobody got a problem at all. Yeah. And nobody think about nobody how they done you, but everybody's in love now. Yeah. Amen. That's how we overcome it. That's how we become one. Yeah. Because covenant, I ain't, covenant is about when you don't have somebody, I make up what you don't have. Yeah. So nobody can tell you you don't have because I can make it up. Yeah. If you're weak, I'm going to make it up. Thank you, Lord. Not these, not these people today, they won't do it. <laughs> you need a dollar to fit, finish the meal up, they won't give you a dollar. But if you, with me, if you got a dollar, you short a dollar, I'm going to put the dollar and pay a tip too for you. If you're with me, that's what comes to mind. I ain't going to make fun of you because you you're a dollar short. Thank God somebody got the money. So we ain't got to wash dishes. <laughs> you want to shame me because I ain't got the money? You want me to see you ashamed because you're part of the same body? You, I'm going to be shamed too. But we ain't going to be shamed in the word of faith because we're going to take care of one another. Because, see, I'm in covenant with you. How many of y'all know that I'm, you, I'm in covenant with you? Man, all right. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you.